Every calisthenics transformation you see is a skinny person getting huge, so it can be really daunting to start if you're overweight. But years ago, I started my calisthenics journey, and I went from looking like this to looking like this. Oh god damn! <laughs> <laughs> you look like four times bigger. <laughs> I went from not being able to do a single pull up to doing consecutive muscle ups. Since this is body weight training, it is going to be harder to start if you're bigger, but I'm going to teach you guys how I started and was able to progress to get shredded. First, I'm gonna go over stretching to prevent any injuries, and then we're gonna go into workouts. For our stretching, we're gonna start with warming up our wrist. It's one of the most important things to stretch when you're doing calisthenics because you use it for almost every exercise. Do each stretch for 30 seconds. While I go over my warm up, I want to talk to you guys about a good mindset to have when you first start calisthenics or lifting. As long as you always have good form, you don't need to lift heavy to get results. Start with a lower weight and work on getting that mind to muscle connection. The second is starting with a workout that you can handle. Too many people wanna get results fast, so they start with this really intense workout and then they end up quitting. Do easier progressions if you need to and if you're feeling too tired to finish your workout, go home and try again tomorrow. The last thing is to do a workout that makes you feel good. Personally, I hated doing split workouts. I would look in the mirror and feel like I'm not making any progress. Instead, I did a full body routine because it made me look better when I had a pump. Even though it only lasted 30 minutes, it made me want to go to the gym more to achieve that look. We're gonna start with pull-ups in rows. Depending on how strong you are, you can start with doing pull-ups and just do four by 10, but I wasn't able to do pull-ups and in Instead, I worked on a different progression that I think helps bring your numbers up. We're gonna be doing pull-up negatives. It's basically a pull-up, but you're only working on the downside of it. We're gonna start by grabbing the bar and activating our scapulas. We're basically making sure that we aren't gonna slouch our shoulders. This should also put you on a slight tilt back to activate all of your muscles. This is important because you want your back activated from the top all the way to the bottom of your workout. If you're at a gym and you have a block to stand on, that can help, but if you're outside, you can use a lower bar like this so that you can just jump up and then bend your knees so that you can get your full length all the way down. The way I program my workouts is I will do two sets with my grip going this way or two sets with my grip going this way. So then I'm working my forearms and then I'm working my biceps on these. I think it's more effective because you're already doing a compound movement. You can just get more out of your workout and if you want, you can increase your sets as well. I'm gonna go to Planet Fitness later and show you a different machine that you can use and you can still get good form if you can't do any pull-up negatives right now, you can do this next progression, which is Australian pull-ups. Start by getting under the bar and getting parallel to the ground. Then you push your heels through. Again, you're gonna want good form and have your back activated all the way through. You're gonna keep your elbows tight and pull through the middle of your chest. If it's too hard using your legs straight, you can also just bend your knees. Now onto triceps. The most effective workout is dips. It's a compound workout using your core, your rear delts, your chest, and your triceps. When you get on the bar, you wanna make sure you're not slouching your shoulders. You wanna push all the way through. Then you're gonna squeeze your core and bend your knees. When you go down, you should be on a slight tilt forward. And you don't wanna go below 90 degrees or you're gonna put your shoulder in a compromising position. I wouldn't do negatives of these dips because you can injure yourself. So we're gonna go on to doing some bench dips. When you're doing bench dips, you don't want your hips forward too much. You want them kind of close to the bench. Once you're in the right spot, you can extend your legs and balance on your heels. The form should feel the same, but you're gonna lean back instead. And if these are too hard for you, you can do them with your knees bent. Now we're moving on to biceps. This workout is really weird, but I'll just show you. This is called a pelican curl. You start with the bar behind you, leaning forward and resting your weight on your shoulders. Walk back and squeeze your core, chest, and triceps. Lock your elbows in place and curl, pulling the bar to your lower back. This can also help you train for a back lever. It's a really weird one but this gives me a huge bicep pump. Also, you can do um, kind of like rows, but you'll go right here and you'll just make sure you emphasize on the curl instead of pulling like a row. If you can't do either of these, there's nothing wrong with grabbing some dumbbells and doing curls. Now onto the next muscle group, which is chest. The only thing I do for chest is push-ups. At the top of your push-up, you should feel your lats and push all the way through your triceps and shoulders. When you go down, it should almost look like you're squeezing your back together and squeeze your glutes and your abs. If you don't want to do knee push-ups, you can do elevated push-ups. These are both about the same intensity and you can do wide grip for biceps and close grip for triceps. Our next workout is going to 
would be for shoulders. The end goal is handstands and handstand push-ups, but a great place to start is with pike push-ups. The form is almost exactly the same as a regular push-up, except you're gonna curl your upper back and tuck your chin. When you go down for the push-up, you're keeping your forearms straight up and down and leaning all of your weight forward. For the progression, start with your hands farther forward and walk your hands back to make it more intense. You can also do this on your knees or on an elevated surface. The last and most dreaded muscle group is legs, but body weight squats are a great way to work your abs and it doubles as cardio. Start with your feet slightly wider than your body width. Bend at the hips and keep your chest up. As you squat down, sit your weight into your heels. And when you get to the top, squeeze your glutes and push your pelvis forward. And you should be squeezing your abs the whole time. An easier workout we can do for legs is lunges. Squeeze your abs and drop your knee, making sure your knee doesn't go over your toes. You should feel this workout in your quads and you can hold dumbbells if you want this workout more intense. Sometimes the reason you can't do a leg workout like squats or lunges is because your lower back is really tight. This can happen if you sit in a chair all day, so instead of doing leg workouts, you guys can just do these stretches. Try to keep your lower back flat, and this will help stretch your hamstrings as well. The only workout I do for abs is hanging knee raises, but those are a bit advanced, so I started with these three ab workouts. You want to hold a hollow body position, which looks like this, and then do butterfly kicks, which works the shape of your abs, then knee raises, which works your lower abs. I don't work my upper abs because they get used indirectly, and this workout that works your obliques. So while I was practicing flips, this guy was asking for tips about a side flip, and then he randomly just pulled one out. So while this interaction goes on, I'm just gonna give you guys a few tips. There is so much information about fitness on YouTube that you get stuck because you don't really know what you're doing. So you're trying to find the most optimal way to work out every muscle, but it really comes down to simplicity and consistency. For a starting routine, I recommend doing a four by 10 for one workout of each muscle group. This will get you to a pretty good looking physique. From there, you guys can add workouts in to get bigger shoulders or a bigger chest. You guys can DM me any questions on Instagram. Only a quarter of the work is in the gym and most of it is in the kitchen. I'll be making videos on how to eat clean and making healthy food for yourself. Let me know what kind of content you guys wanna see next. I can teach you guys the basics to flipping. I can make a more advanced calisthenics tutorial. Leave your suggestions in the comments and subscribe to the channel to see more content. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time.